These are my current speakers. I call them street speakers because I found them in the street. I also have a street typewriter and a street barbecue as well as a street uh, Tupperware container that when I'm not feeling well I sometimes keep next to the bed in case I throw up. Now there's nothing wrong with these street things but they're perhaps not the most classy. Not classy at all. Day class A. French. Classic? Now I've had this Bluetooth amp sitting in my meticulously organized parts drawers for several years and when I finally found it again I decided to give myself a bit of a deadline for this project and I wanted to create a set of classy Bluetooth speakers in the span of one afternoon. Editor's note, I meant one weekend, but it actually took me eight days. I was somewhat optimistic in my timeline. Now the first thing I did was started to collect measurements. I knew I wanted it to fit under my computer monitor, actually to replace another set of speakers that I found on the street. Now I also had to measure components like switches, and I used this set of very cheap calipers that have a dead battery and I just sort of eyeballed half millimeter measurements. Measurements in hand, I set off with importing all of those numbers into Fusion 360, a program I kind of know how to use pretty inefficiently. The design, however, is fairly simple. Basically, it's a box with cutouts for speaker drivers and holes for screws. I usually just design screw holes to be 3 millimeters in diameter and find random screws that fit into those holes from my little box of random screws, a move that may have come back to bite me later down the line in this project. Additionally, I made sure the design had a space for a piece of one and a half inch by three quarter inch oak lumber that I had on hand from when I made tripod lamps in a previous video. Along with the main body, I designed a simple backplate with a few screw holes and a place for a barrel connection for 12 volt power, as well as a bezel on the front of the stereo to sort of hide the edges of the fabric I was going to place over it, as well as a small plate to mount the buttons on the side. After getting everything designed in Fusion 360, I sent the files to the printer, starting with the main body. A short 16 hours later, I was left with a complete main body section of the stereo. I broke off the support structure and was quite pleased with the results. Now there is a slight lift on two of the corners, but I was pretty sure it was going to work, and I really didn't want to print it again. Now, in order to replace the street speakers, the street speakers themselves would have to die. You see, in my vain attempt to complete this project quickly for the sake of YouTube glory and getting a video out, I had to use mostly pieces I had on hand, and that meant cannibalizing the old speaker drivers. After harvesting the organs from the now dead street speakers, I desoldered the original wires and soldered in new wires to connect the drivers to the amp. You may notice I am soldering red and black wires. Uh, in this case, red is the positive and black is the negative. I ran out of white wire, except in one case where black is positive and green is negative. Uh, yeah. The Bluetooth amp I bought already has buttons on it, but I wanted to extend those buttons out to a different position. So I basically just soldered in a bunch of wires from the original buttons out to a new set of larger buttons on the side of the speaker, almost like a little daughter board for the audio controls. There are five buttons in total, play and pause, track forward, track back, and then volume up and down. These are also wired with black and red wires, much smaller in gauge, mostly to keep track of the pairs, as I didn't really need a system of negative and positive, as it's really just a signal that goes through those buttons. Something I did learn was that soldering is very challenging with a camera set up between you and the project. Now I was not an expert solderer before, and trying to see around or through the camera did not improve things. Next up was cutting to size the bit of this kind of herringbone, almost tweed fabric that we had lying around from some sewing experiments. I pretty roughly traced around the stereo body with a pen and used some sharp scissors to cut to size. Ultimately, the edges would be covered with a separate 3D printed bezel, so it didn't have to be perfect, 
Uh, and then this was attached with Super 77 spray adhesive from 3M. And I think that the fabric with that little bit of oak really complement each other quite well. Now back to that aforementioned piece of oak trim. I always kind of like the look of kind of cheesy wood grain on stereo equipment of yore from like the 60s and 70s and thought adding a piece of real solid wood would add quite a bit to the look of this design. Now all I had to do was measure for length and cut to size. I did forget to model the holes for the mounting screws and simply just drilled out screw holes in the printed body and the wood. I then planed down the bottom of the wood at a slight angle. I actually designed the stereo with about 2 degrees of lean on the base so the speaker is facing slightly up. Lastly, I added Danish oil to bring out the color of the wood just a bit and I just brushed that on with a bit of paper towel. With the body complete, it was time to install the electronics. First in was that daughter board for the button control extension. Next up was a small 3D printed bracket that held all of those buttons in the correct position on the body. Then it was the Bluetooth amp itself and the speaker drivers we took out of the Sony speakers I found on the street. The speaker and power wires just screw into terminals on the amp and the barrel connector for the 12 volts is simply screwed in through the back plate. It was in installing the back plate where disaster struck. One of the random screws that I found was a little too tight of a fit and it sheared the screw mount on the top right of the stereo body. I cut a length of piano wire for strength and super glued it back on. If I was going to remake this design, I would have added a strengthening rib to the screw mounts to strengthen and tie them into the main body, uh, something that you'll see a lot of times in injection molded parts. That fix, it was just a matter of pushing on the buttons and plugging it in. I will mention a corner that I cut to get this finished. The RCA connectors that you may see um, are purely decorative at this point. At some time I would like to wire them in, uh, but not today. You know I almost forgot the very last step is attaching my last name to the bottom right corner, a 3D printing project I showed in an earlier short. In terms of I.O., there is that 12 volt uh, barrel connector on the back for power, as well as a simple rotary power switch on the front of the stereo. Lastly, we have those five buttons, unlabeled buttons, but buttons nonetheless on the side of the stereo for controlling the Bluetooth functionality. And I have to say, coming from a set of speakers that I found on the side of the road, and then stealing, cannibalizing the drivers from that using a cheap Bluetooth amplifier off of Amazon, 3D printing a couple main pieces and adding a bit of wood and fabric, I think we ended up with a pretty pleasing to the eye result. To be honest, it's not really anything audiophile quality, but for a little Bluetooth speaker, something that can fit underneath my computer screen or be fairly portable to take away with me, I think it's not a bad result and something that um, really, I think, looks pretty classy. <laughs>